Now, I wasn't going to comment on this because it's getting out of control. It seems that Jesse Smollett, the brother of famous childhood actress, now adult actress, Journey Smollett Bell, may have been lying. Let's explore that. Okay, it was told that Jesse had gotten attacked around 2 a.m. on January 29th, 2019 on the 300 block of East North Water Street in Chicago Stratoville neighborhood. He told police two masked men shouted homophobic slurs at him, attacked him, put a rope around his neck and poured a liquid on him that smelled like bleach. The police said phone records provided by Jesse do show he was on the phone with his manager at the time of attack. Both men told investigators Jesse attackers yelled slurs. Jesse then sought treatment at a hospital after attack and was relieved to be in good condition. Then it was an outpour of sympathy from the stars, fans, and so on. Then the doubts came in. It seems that many people think that Jesse may be lying about what actually happened. Although the officers have repeatedly said that it wasn't a hoax, even though there wasn't any evidence. But the main reason many people said it was a lie was because he said they were hollering MAGA, you know, make America great again, you know, Trump um, phrase. So of course, many MAGA supporters claim that the young actor slash singer was lying. They said that some parts of his story didn't make sense. They even released a surveillance video showing two suspicious people that was taken around the time of attack. Take a look. Police released these photos calling these people, quote, potential persons of interest. And late tonight, a spokesman confirmed Smollett and his music manager did tell detectives they were on the phone as the alleged attack unfolded. But investigators were unable to independently verify phone records because Smollett declined to turn his phone over. And tonight, the mayor also weighing in. Um, obviously, uh, the alleged statement of what happened here is horrific and there's no place for it here in the city of Chicago. Mayor Rahm Emanuel talks about a case attracting national headlines. Actor Jussie Smollett telling police he was brutally attacked in Chicago early Tuesday morning. Police tell ABC7 a dozen detectives are pursuing new leads, including grainy photos of two persons of interest. Tonight, police have tracked Jussie Smollett's movements, confirming video shows Smollett Walking across the street from those two persons of interest, he walks out of frame for about a minute and reappears on another camera, quote, wearing a rope like a necktie. There is no video of an assault. Investigators say Smollett then walked into an apartment building, passing security and boarding an elevator. He would enter an apartment, and that's where police were eventually called. Police also confirmed Smollett told them he was on the phone with his manager as his attackers yelled racial and homophobic slurs. But detectives can't verify because he refused to give them his phone. Police also say Smollett had road salt on his sweatshirt, but nowhere else on his body in surveillance video. Detectives also were back at the scene yesterday with Smollett as he retraced what he says happened early in the morning. Hey, if you like now because of the media attention, Jesse had sat down to speak about his attack, and this is what he said. I'm pissed off. What is it that has you so angry? Is it the the attackers? It's the is attackers, it but it's also the attacks. It's like, you know, at first it was a thing of like, listen, if I tell the truth, then that's it, because it's the truth. Mm -hmm.
then it became a thing of like, oh, how can you doubt that? Like, how do you, how do you not believe that? It's the truth. And then it became a thing of like, oh, it's not necessarily that you don't believe that this is the truth. You don't even want to see the truth. What happened that night, Jesse? When I landed in Chicago and Frank Gatson, who's like my uncle, and he's also my creative director, and he picked me up. And then we got back to the apartment. There was no food. And so I went out to Walgreens thinking that they were 24 hours and to have a smoke. <laughs> uh, Walgreens was closed. Um, so I called him up and I said, hey, I'm gonna run to Subway, which was across the street, and I'm gonna get a salad. Do you want anything? I went to the Subway and got the order. During that time, I texted my manager thinking that he was still in Australia because he was on an Australian tour with one of his other clients. Mm -hmm. And I said, yo, call me when you can. He called me immediately. And while he was on the phone, I uh, heard, as I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> my name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking and then I heard, Empire So I turned around and I said, the did you just say to me? And then I see the uh, attacker uh, masked and he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling, you know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off. And I saw where they ran. And the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out. And it was sitting there. And my manager was still on the phone. So I picked up the phone and I said, Brandon. And he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I, then I looked down and I see that there's a rope around my neck which I hadn't You hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. How long did this all It felt take like minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds, honestly. I can't tell you, honestly. Um, I noticed the rope around my neck, and I started screaming. And I said, there's a rope around my neck. Did you get any kind of description of the attack? I gave a body description, and I, you know, because I saw this but, and you know, right here or whatever, but I didn't see, I can't tell you what color their eyes were. I can't tell you. And I did not see anything except the second person I saw running away. And the first person, yeah, I saw, saw his stature. I gave the description as best as I could. You have to understand also that it's Chicago in winter. People can wear ski masks and nobody's gonna question that. The police have gone through a lot of video and they were able to capture an image of two people of interest. Have you seen that image mm -hmm. and do you believe that they could possibly be the attackers? I do. What is it about their, their size or what, why do you feel that they could possibly be? Because I was there. For me, when that was released, I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere. I don't have any doubt in my mind that that's them never did. Then in recent news, they recently released pictures of the two alleged attackers whom they're currently questioning. They're saying that suspects Opine and Abel Asendero were released from custody. Attorney Gloria Schmidt and the new evidence that triggered the release of her clients was something they knew and presumably told cops that went on to say that they wouldn't say the attack was staged, but there were moving parts and she didn't want to speculate. It seems that Ola and Abel both worked on Empire and Abel was especially friendly with Jesse. And something else interesting, her clients went to Nigeria the day of the alleged attack. Mm -hmm. Put that in notation. But added it was a great question, but she said that she didn't want to speak for her clients because they had a story to tell when the time is right. That clearly sounds like they have inside information about what actually went down in Jesse's apartment building, or is it just them lying and she and them are just riding this for fame and money? Now, this confirms my suspicion of the two men looking like actors, but now I'm starting to question everything.
Okay, it seems that this attack on Jesse that I believe actually happened, I don't believe it was staged. I do, however, question the validity of the video footage and the alleged suspects. It seems that the media and many Trump supporters are turning this into a mockery of some kind. I mean, you can't believe TMZ all of the time, although I'm a huge fan. I even did a video about them. I will leave the link below. But do note that they have many people in their pocket and the creator of TMZ has had a long connection to Trump. So some of the video footage pictures are not real and some of them can be staged to validate the MAGA supporters on the alleged MAGA theory to make Jesse look like he was lying and just trying to make Trump and his supporters look bad. Think about it. The timing of the video footage, the black men. Who so happens to be the same size of these alleged attackers in the suspicious video footage? I mean, what a way to prove his story wrong than say some random black slash color dudes attacked him. Well, thanks for proving I was attacked. I mean, I'm sure that's what he's thinking. But who are these dudes that look like models and you have revealed that they were in fact actors? This was nothing but some concocted plan between Jesse and his homeboys as an attack on Trump and his MAGA supporters. They all agreed and didn't think it would get that far. As you know, as them ever been caught. This wasn't some concocted plan with Jesse involved. He was the victim and this was some sick attack from two jealous men who apparently had some infatuation for Jesse and they planned the attack while using mega words to throw him off their true identity. Tell me what you all think below. Don't forget to stop and shop in my online merchant store. And also don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And also don't forget to follow my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post on them every day. Hope to see you all there. Love you all. Bye.